Hi, and thanks for joining me today. So today we'll be taking an overview of some of the lower positions on the cello. The lower positions I've defined as any in which the left hand thumb stays on the back of the cello neck. So I'm bringing into play some resources to show the standard designations of these positions, but as we'll see, sometimes they can be a little bit confusing. So here's an example of one source that can be a little bit confusing if you talk about second position. This, uh, this passage that I'm showing now is from one of the Suzuki methods. If you look at the measure that's right in the middle of the field here, the one, two, the third and the fifth note, uh, the, first, the, the third note is C natural, the fifth note is G natural, and in this position, which he calls second position, uh, the cellist is using their third finger for each of those notes. Um, hang on for the next scene. This is two pages away in the exact same book. In this case, uh, the, the method is calling the, this position that the cellist needs to use second position also. But you'll notice in the measure that's at the center of the, of the video right now, uh, that is also a G natural, but here we're using our second finger instead of our third finger, as we saw in the previous scene. So clearly these are not the exact same position, even though they're called the same. Let's start by looking at first position. That's where pretty much all of us begin our cello studies. Okay, here we are on the A string and in first position, as we've said. So first finger will be on B natural, the second finger on C natural, the third finger is on C sharp, fourth finger on D. Okay, if I extend forward, then it will look like this, and if I extend backwards, it looks like that. Now before we move up the fingerboard, there's half position to talk about. So I can bring my hand back one half step, now my first finger is on B flat, my second finger is on B natural, third finger on C natural, fourth finger on C sharp. Okay, if I extend forward, then we'll look like this. And realistically, we cannot really extend backwards from this, from this point. So now I move up to second position. Um, I'm beginning with the position that is indicated on the chart, and of course we're still on the A string. Now my first finger is on C sharp, my second finger is on D, my third finger is on E flat, my fourth finger is on E natural. Okay, and of course, although some sources simply refer to this as second position, I prefer to call it high second position because it is possible to position my hand one half step further back, uh, uh, which is still further forward than first position. If I extend forward, will be like this, and if I extend backwards, it'll be like this. By the way, quick aside, I'm assuming for the purposes of this video that enharmonic equivalents are something that are familiar to you. In other words, a, um, uh, a D sharp is uh, enharmonically equivalent to an E flat. If this is something that is not uh, familiar to you, I have, uh, I have provided a link to a site that, that should help to clarify it for you. <clears throat> now what the chart doesn't really indicate is when we want to put our hand a half step lower than it is or than it had been before as I indicated a moment ago. My first finger is now on C natural and our fourth finger will end up on E flat. And again, as to, to repeat myself, to help students deal with these differences, I call this new location a low second position, and the previous one, again, as I indicated, um, I call high second position. If I extend forward, it looks like this. If I extend backwards, it looks like that. Okay. Now I've moved to third position, and we have a comparable situation. I will start in what is indicated as third position on this chart. I call it low third position. My first finger is on D natural, my second finger is on E flat, my third finger is on E natural, and my fourth finger is on F natural. If I extend forward, it'll look like this. If I extend backwards, it'll look like that. And in a similar manner to how we dealt with the two 
second positions, I am now in high third position. Now my first finger is on E flat, my second finger is on E natural, third finger on F natural, fourth finger on F sharp. I can extend forward, I can extend backwards. Lastly, we come to fourth position. Um, this is very easy to find on the cello. Um, you can't really see it in this view, but my thumb is right smack in the middle of the curve between the neck and the, um, and the heel of the neck. Now my first, is, sorry, my first finger is on E natural, my second finger is on F natural, my third finger is on F sharp, my fourth finger is on G natural. If I extend forward, it will look like this. If I extend backwards, it will look like this. So naturally all of this works on any of the strings. Uh, when you go to a different string, of course, the pitches will change accordingly. In other words, we can do any of these on any of the four strings of the cello. One thing that's worth noting, some of the positions, especially when we're extending, uh, look and function identically to another. For example, here I am in, let's see, so right now I'm in low second position and I'm going to extend forward, okay? Now, again, functionally and visually, this will seem to be identical to high second position with a backwards extension, okay? So it's worth keeping that kind of thing in mind. My final remark, um, I am glad to see that um, I was able to find uh, what I consider to be a better fingering chart. Uh, it shows me that there are cellists, besides myself, who have been concerned about some of these, uh, the previous inexact designations that have been used, um, and I give full, full credit and full kudos to cellist Darren Cullen, and I have provided a link to her cello site if you want to look into that further. Well, I hope this video has helped to clarify some of the intricacies of, of the lower cello positions. As always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can do so via the comments on this video, or you can reach me through my webpage. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope to see you again next time.